what's good y'all it's your boy ross back out again with another video so i finally got a chance to finish wwe Evil. and uh the, their very first season of it and i must say i enjoyed that little docu series i i thought it was it was very cool in the concept of focusing primarily on the evil characters or as we like to call it in the clutch squad the rogue characters and uh in professional wrestling and i loved it uh i didn't love every episode uh, i'm gonna be honest here i skipped the stephanie mcmahon episode i, I just did I, I did not watch that episode i never really cared for stephanie mcmahon as a heel if anything i would have thought they would have vince mcmahon as one of the episodes maybe they would do it in season two but i think vince mcmahon is more of a a better character to talk about as being a heel or being evil than stephanie in my opinion i just never really cared for a character i i just didn't care for it but that was and that was one of the episodes i didn't watch um i also i watched the miz episode but it, it was probably my least favorite one out of all of them that i did watch the miz episode it was it was it was cool you know i i, I liked some of his his back back story on you know how he felt like he didn't belong and stuff like that. i enjoyed that but ultimately I, I i wasn't like captivated as him being a heel i mean we you know we know he's always been a heel he's better as a heel pretty good on the microphone but i i just was like it was okay it was my least favorite out of all of the other episodes so we got to talk about the episodes that i really truly enjoyed if you haven't seen evil go check it out now um i don't want to spoil anything for you so this is your opportunity to go check it out it's on peacock it is worth your time at least the episodes i'm about to talk about for sure so the first episode they talk about is hollywood hulk hogan they started off the series very great i loved i love them breaking down how hulk hogan was bigger than wrestling in the in the early 80s uh, the hulk hogan that say your prayers and eat your vitamins brother like that hulk hogan everyone loved him ever the kids loved him everybody was just infatuated with hulk hogan and then the 90s came in and that's when things changed that's when the climate of the world changed it wasn't about eating your vitamins it was more about screw eating your vitamins i'm gonna eat whatever i want it was the the rebellious era of television media everything related to to just lifestyle it was all about being rebellious and he wasn't as over he wasn't the fans started booing him they didn't really care for him as much because you got to understand the fans that watched him as kids they're not teenagers they're now young adults and they're not trying to eat their vitamins and say their prayers they're trying to trying to be rebellious so it, it it didn't really work then he went over to wcw and yes he was still a big name but people were kind of not caring you know they 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 weren't caring about what hulk hogan had to say and, and i really love the fact that eric bischoff was like yo i think you need to turn heel and Hulk Hogan, he wasn't so sure about it. He was kind of like nervous about that because that's a big change. If you know anything about Hulk Hogan, you would think he would have always been faced and that was just going to be him, the good guy, the, the hero. But he he knew that he had to switch up something and Eric Bischoff was on to something. Him turning heel was the best thing that could happen, not to WCW, but wrestling as a whole because of what it created. So when he finally joined Scott Hall, rest in peace, and Kevin Nash as the third member, and they created the NWO to see the footage of the crowd legitimately shocked, legitimately pissed off. Kids are, their feelings are hurt. People throwing trash in the ring, like throwing trash in the ring as Hulk Hogan is giving a scathing promo screw the fans i'm gonna do it how i want to we're gonna create the new world order it was fantastic to see that visual it was just beautiful to see and they created one of if not one of the best factions of all time and i love me some dx don't get it twisted i love me some degeneration x but at the same time you can't deny 
NWO was just, they was just the it thing in wrestling. When you have, uh, I want to say, what's his name? He used to play for the Bulls. Uh, Dennis Rodman. They're in the playoffs. They're trying to win a championship, and he literally gets on a plane after a game. This was in the, the, the Last Dance documentary. Gets on a plane to go wrestle with Hulk Hogan in the NWO after a playoff game because he wanted to be a part of that. That's when you knew it was bigger. It was bigger than wrestling. And it got to the point where people weren't booing the NWO after a while. They were cheering because they it felt cool to be a part of something so so 90s. And the NWO is the epitome of the 90s. And I love that episode. One of the best episodes of season one. And it was the first one. Definitely go check it out. It is it is so good. Love that episode, man. Uh, of course, The Miz was the next one. I didn't really, it kind of fell off for me. It was okay. It was, it was, it was, it was okay, but it was my least favorite episode. I'm not really going to go into that. If you want to check it out, go check it out. Uh, the next episode after that was the Sasha Banks one. I love this one. This one was really good. I, I tweeted about it. Sasha Banks as a heel is the best version of her. And it was so cool to see her progress, to see her be this, you know, come into the industry you know as you know this goody two shoes but start to switch her character starts to switch up her her demeanor uh of course if you guys don't know eddie guerrero, guerrero is her biggest inspiration and eddie eddie was one of the best heels to ever do it he was he was such a good heel people still loved him he lied he cheated and he stole three characteristics of a bad guy three characteristics of going rogue and people loved it she loved it and it was a big motivation for her and when she finally went with the boss gimmick and and really ran with that oh bruh you could tell she believed in the boss gimmick the sasha banks gimmick the boss time and it it, it was she created some of the best matches and the best moments of course they had to include her her saga her feud with Bailey and then getting into it with one of the bigger one of one of biggest uh one of Bailey's biggest supporters this is when I first saw found out about Sasha Banks watching that feud and they they talked about how she made a little girl cry and and and, and it's funny they had the girl on there I forgot her name I think you guys I think it's Izzy or something like that you guys know who I'm talking about she was Bailey's biggest fan and it's crazy because I'm like, damn, I'm getting old because she's so much older now. But to see her give her take on the whole situation, like she legitimately made this little girl cry. And it was the greatest thing I had ever seen, like from a woman's wrestler. I've never seen something so heinous. It was great. It was fantastic. That is how you turn it up. That is how you be a true heel. They had some fantastic matches and is she's she's just fantastic in the ring when it when it comes to really being evil like you want to see sasha get an ass well but at the same time you know sasha can go in the ring so definitely go check that episode out episode three definitely enjoyed that one um episode four was butlers of destruction come on now they are evil personified undertaker kane i tweeted this out as well the undertaker legitimately scared me and also Kane scared me. And it was one of those things where that character that they created was so, so different for that time period. Because no one had seen a character that, he was one of the first few characters that didn't know, like he would no sell moves. Like he, he would, he would be one of those people that would eat a finisher that would kill, that would pretty much take somebody out. And it, it didn't work on him because he was the Undertaker. He was a dead man that you could not kill. And and people were afraid. And it was so cool to see. Because it's like, bro, who can stop this guy? And come Kane. And then people were more afraid of Kane. Because it's like, wait, what, what is going on? And it's cool because it, it made people care about The Undertaker. It, it started to turn The Undertaker face. But he still has this evil type presence. And I love this, man. This was such a good episode. Just seeing them 
be the brothers of destruction destroy anybody and everybody it was such a, a a cool nostalgia vibe definitely check out of course brothers of destruction that's another good episode that i definitely enjoyed one of my favorite ones is the randy orton episode we've all seen the clip of randy orton literally losing his sh his shit to get into character just Struh! 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 yeah Ooh, i'm like oh uh Randy, uh Randy, calm down, bro. Just, uh, just calm down, bro. But uh I, one thing I will say that surprised me about this episode is Randy talking about his backstory and talking about how he used to be bullied. I would have never guessed him being a third generation superstar wrestler. You know, his dad's a wrestler, a famous wrestler. Him getting bullied and picked on. I never would have guessed that in a million years. So to see his progression into what he is now, you know, what he was, that era, the Legend Killer era, Randy Orton, was fantastic. They talked about his match with Mick Foley, and that was the match that really started getting people to be like, you know what, this guy can go. This guy can hang with a hardcore legend and beat him. This guy can go. And him pairing up with Evolution, easily one of the best things for his career. Him on that... That, that run of punting people in the head. Randy Orton, was he he was fantastic, man. I mean, he still is fantastic. And uh, is easily one of my favorite episodes. Outside of the Hulk Hogan one, the Randy Orton one is definitely a close second. If you have not checked it out, I'm going to keep saying this. Definitely go check this one out as well. This one was a good one. I thoroughly enjoyed. Once again, I told y'all I skipped the Stephanie e. McMahon episode. Didn't really care for it. Because the next episode after that one was the Ric Flair one. The dirtiest player in the game. Woo! I want to see the woos in the comment section. It's Ric Flair. And I didn't know he had suffered like a... He was in a plane accident earlier in his career. He broke his back in like three places. And he was kind of floundering. Because people, you know, people... He, I guess he kind of fell in that generic wrestler role. So he wasn't really getting the adulation like he wanted and that's when he he went with the nature boy rick flair gimmick after the car wreck uh, after the plane wreck um and it was it it took a, a life of its own and i like how Shawn michaels he was interviewed and he said what you see in rick flair that wasn't no gimmick that was him he was actually living the lifestyle the rolexes the wheeling dealing kiss stealing limousine riding jet flying that was him he literally lived that lifestyle that was not a gimmick he was having the time of his life if you know what i mean rick flair was that guy he was that guy in the ring he was that guy on the microphone and he was the dirtiest player in the game he would cheat he would do all that didn't matter to win and guess what? People loved it. It was to the point where he became bigger than wrestling. He is a cultural icon. Everyone hits the woo. Everyone does the Ric Flair impersonation because it's Ric Flair. You wanted to be like him. And he knew you wanted to be like him. And that's what made him such a great bad guy. He, you wanted to be him. Even though you knew what he was doing was messed up, even though you knew he was he was flexing on you, he was the he was the OG flexer in wrestling, and people love that. I also like them talking about in his later years after uh, he uh, left WWE, went to WCW again, and right before that, you know, they closed up when WCW was bought out. He went back to WWE, and he just didn't feel like he was the same. He didn't feel like he could go. He started to be he started to be insecure. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't feel like Ric Flair, the nature boy. And that's when Triple H came in. And that's when he brought him in the fold to Evolution. And that's what brought him back. That's what made him start to feel like Ric Flair again. When he linked up with Triple H and they created Evolution. And I thought that was such a touching moment and a vulnerable moment. Because at the end of the day, when you're on top, when you feel like you're the man for so long, at some point... You start to have those doubts as you get older and then there's new talent new new fresh faces new fresh ideas and people care about these newer guys and you're like damn i don't know if i can hang anymore and triple h was able to bring that rick flair back out again 
back out again and it was cool to see so i love 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 this episode definitely go check this out as well this is an episode that you must watch i mean this whole series is a must watch i'm gonna just put that out there but this is an episode you guys will definitely enjoy so the rick flair one was fantastic and of course the last episode of season one <sighs> roman reigns the rogue one himself i personally this probably this may be like my, my my favorite one only because I watched the progression of Roman Reigns. And I like that they acknowledged that what was happening and the beginning of Roman Reigns like push, it wasn't working. They acknowledged it finally. Like they acknowledge like we acknowledge him. They finally acknowledged it wasn't working. The people they had interviewing on there. They, they acknowledged it didn't work. It wasn't going to work. Nothing that Vince did to push Roman worked. And I like how Roman even was vulnerable. He talked about when he won the Royal Rumble and The Rock came out there. And they booed him. I watched that live. They booed this man so viciously. And it hurt him. Because he's like, he's a human being. Like, damn, bro. Like, they don't really like me. Not even The Rock could get me over. Right? Fast forward, he comes out, he has, he lets the world know he has leukemia. He lets the world know, and he has to relinquish the championship. People showing him love. They're, they step away from the hate of the character. They show the person love. They show Joe love. Joe NY. They show him love. I hope I said it correctly. He comes back. Everybody's loving him. Has his match that year. That year's WrestleMania against Drew McIntyre. And I watched that live. And they booed the shit out of him. They booed him. And that hurt him as well. That hurt him even more. And I like how the Usos was like, damn, bro. They really don't like you. You came back from a serious situation. A life-threatening situation. And it's like, all right, well, you back. But they still pushing you. So, boo. We don't care. We don't like you. We don't, we don't give a damn. And it, it, it really it really bogged him down. And I think with the whole COVID situation and him taking a step back and being able to refocus himself. And when he came back, he said, this is how I need to be. And this is what I'm going to be. It was the best thing that ever happened in his career. Because what Roman said, and I, I believe this to be true, and I think you guys can agree. He's not playing a character. He is actually being himself. Everything that he says, he believes. Legitimately. That's how he feels. He feels like he is the owner. Like he's the face of this company. WWE needs him. And I love that. I love how he has made that character his own. He believes that truly. And it comes off in his promos. It comes off in his actions. I will never forget watching that SummerSlam. I want to say, was it SummerSlam? Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it was SummerSlam. Fiend versus Braun Strowman. And then Roman coming out there and destroying everybody. And I noticed something wasn't right about him. And we're not talking about the veneers. Something wasn't right. Something wasn't sitting right with me. I'm like, huh. He seems a little bit roguish. And once he aligned himself with Paul, I was like, oh, that, that's it. Oh, he's... He's on the dark side, and I love it. It's he single-handedly saved his career. He single-handedly turned his career around. And now I can say, for the first time in a very long time, they truly have a number one guy. He is the face of WWE. There's no denying it. Whether you like him or not, Roman Reigns in the in the character that he is now, he's the face of the WWE. That's it. He, that, he's the face. And he's showing you why. So definitely, man, go watch that last episode as well. It is fantastic. It's probably, it's definitely my favorite episode of, of the series. And then right behind it is the Hulk Hogan, the Ric Flair, uh, the Sasha Banks Brother Destruction. It's just, it's just overall, it's good. It's, it's worth your time. 
I rather watch all those episodes, even the Stephanie McMahon one, even though I didn't see it. I rather watch all those episodes than watch a night, an episode of Monday Night Raw because I'm telling you, you're gonna be entertained. It was very, very, very entertaining, man. So comment down below. Let me know. Have you guys seen Evil yet? Have you guys watched any of the episodes? And if you have, which one was your favorite episode from season one? And who would you like to see on Evil Season 2? Let me know. Appreciate all the love and support, man. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See y'all next one. Peace.